Hello everyone, welcome to the Mint Analysis for 2nd April 2022. I have already shared today's text analysis on my group. So in case you want to join my telegram group, you can find the link in description. So the first news today is about Russia and how it is encouraging the trade with India. So in yesterday's newspaper, you must have read that Russia is providing the oil to India at a discounted rate. And similarly, it is also encouraging trade with other friendly nations and trying to do that keeping aside the foreign exchange uh, which you usually see dollars uh, are used in international trade so it is avoiding that and in case of india they are encouraging rupee ruble to trade oil military hardware and other goods so here you can see that now why it is doing so so after having the ukrainian crisis after after the russia declared military operations on ukraine us had some had put some sanctions on russia and eu was united in that of effort and was further abandoning the goods from russia because of which russian economy was taking a hit because it was not able to supply its oil outside so now they are providing discounted rates for india and china so that they can boost their trade with them and encouraging non western currency to trade with them so this is all we have in this news next is gst mop up climbs to an all time high of rupees 1.42 trillion in march so here they are saying that a gst collection has increased and it is right now rupee 1.42 trillion and it has been increasing since january and february so why is it so so the reason is given that it is benefiting from improved economic activity and as economic activity improves the goods and services that are being sold improves and that's why gst collection has increased so that that's all we have here next is bond yields to cross 7% on higher government borrowing so bond yields are crossing 7% what does that mean so you can understand it like this that whenever the interest rates increases the bond prices goes down and the bond yields increases so this is the phenomena that we usually see and whenever uh, you buy some bonds so for let's say you buy buy a, buy a government bond at rupees 1000 which gives you 5% interest rates and you get to keep it for 10 years so in that case you won't won't keep that for 10 years instead what you will do is if you find any other opportunity in between you will sell that bond in the secondary market to any other investor so that you can put your money into use to some other investing option so if interest rates in an economy if uh, the interest rate in an economy goes up so the bond is providing you 5% but the economy is providing you 7% so what would uh, what would you do you would try to exit from the bond so you will sell it even at, even if you are selling it at, at lower price you will sell it and invest in that new opportunity so in that way the since the interest rate has increased to 7% your bond bond price has decreased and your bond yield as has increased because that person who has bought your bond so let's say he has bought your bond at 900 rupees he will still, he will still be getting 50 rupees on that bond so 50 rupees on 900 the yield will increase earlier it was 5% now it will come out to be more than 5% so that's the phenomena now keeping this in mind what is actually happening in the bond market so government has to fund the needs has to fund the expenses because of which the government borrowing is increasing so for the previous year we have seen that it was rupees 7.24 trillion but now in the first half it is 8.4245 trillion so the supply of bonds has increased because of which it is impacting the market the interest rates are going up because the supply is more the demand is not going up so this is why the interest rates are also going up and that's why we are saying that the bond market is under pressure and this is not the only reason there are mainly three reason because of which uh, it is experiencing the pressure so the first is high domestic bond supply second is headwinds from higher commodity prices and the third is us treasury yields so all these three uh, factors are contributing to pressure on the bond market so in this case what usually rbi does is it intervenes and try to increase the demand 
so here we are seeing that the supply is increasing so to keep the interest rates in control rbi intervenes and it starts buying the bonds through open market operations so in that case the, the interest is controlled and the money supply is also controlled by rbi but right now people are speculating that rbi won't take any such step and even in the upcoming time you will see that the interest rates are not going to be eased anytime soon so that's the problem here and that's what's there in this article now about next news it's jet fuel prices climb to record high so jet fuel prices are climbing and the commercial lpg prices has also hiked rupees 250 so the lpg is, uh, is going up as well as the uh, jet fuel prices as well because of which aviation industries are facing problem and and their margins are being hampered next is home sales in january to march quarter highest since 2015 so home sales have uh, spiked this year and it was around it is around 71% higher than it what it was in the previous period so this is the stats we are seeing right here next is brookfield to buy 51% stake so what can we take away from this news so brookfield is ready to buy 51% stake in four bharti enterprises assets so what it shows is that it is optimistic about the real estate assets and why is it optimistic because it is foreseeing that the demand for these real estate assets which means that the leasing that the cash that they generate is going to be high and how, how it is going to be high is because more and more offices are being open up and it sees that in near future offices or the employers you can say employers will be inviting their employees to work from office so in that case the space that they have in real estate asset that will be leased out so it's the confidence that it is reflecting the brookfield is reflecting the confidence in real estate asset by purchasing 51% stake in four bharti enterprises assets so this is the take away from this news now next is mid cap small cap stocks rebound so mid cap and small cap all these stocks were down because of the ukraine crisis and right now they are rebounding which means they are the prices of these stocks are rising again so this is what we are seeing in the stock markets area after this tax disputes pile up in absence of authorities so why is it happening so you will have to go back to previous year so previous year uh, government introduced that the quasi judicial system so they said that there these two quasi judicial authorities quasi means half so these judicial authorities will be replaced by two new authorities and these two new authorities which are ITSC and AAR they have not been functional till now so what what is the role of quasi judicial authorities quasi judicial authority tells you how that law will be interpreted and how it will be enforced so it doesn't gives a judgment it just interprets the law and tells you what is the meaning of this law and how it will be enforced so since this quasi judicial authority had to be replaced by two new ones which are not functional so people are now approaching private tax consultants and these private tax consultants are interpreting the tax law and they are telling it to public in whatever way they are understanding it due to this there are many pending laws in the court so you can see that uh, specifically talking about these two authorities so nearly 3000 cases are pending under itsc and more than 700 under aar so this is because the, the new courts are not functional yet you cannot say court actually its authorities so the new two authorities are not functional yet because of which so many cases are pending next is india australia trade accord today winds to get cheaper so why is it so uh, so recently on today interim trade agreement is being signed between india and australia due to which india will provide australia with duty reduction in wines so australia will be able to access our market with the reduced duties so because of which the wines will be cheaper and similarly india will be able to gain better access in australian market towards uh, these free access for slew of labor intensive sectors 
and apart from this india will also gain from liberalized visa regime which means that the visa requirements will further be uh, lesser than what is what it is right now so these are the benefits of australia as well as india so australia will get get, get benefit in the area of mine and india will get benefited in the area of textiles gems and jewelries leather and footwear and visa regime so this is how the agreement will be structured we have seen the yield now next is pv demand jumps as personal mobility gains traction in fiscal year 2022 so right now economy is opening up the offices are opening up uh, schools and universities are also reopening because of which people are now demanding personal mobility so they are demanding their own transport because of which the passenger vehicle sales has jumped so right now the sector is saying the industry is saying that the demand will be robust in upcoming time however there are certain supply bottlenecks so the semiconductor shortage shortage that we faced is still hasn't been uh, you know sorted out so that's a problem however the demand will be robust in upcoming times so that's all we have in today's news paper in case you want to read about the different types of agreements uh, since we have just studied about india australia one the interim trade agreement if you want to see other agreements as well you can find the link in the top right corner and see the video from there uh, there on otherwise you can also see it from my playlist if the video has helped you please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel to join my telegram group the link will be in description thank you so much